Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome back to episode number 15 of my Minecraft Let's Play. Hope you are all doing very well and we're just flying around our wizard's tower, even hitting it in the start to today's episode. But we are going to be building again today. That's right. We have got quite a bit planned for today's episode. Now, between episodes, I haven't really had a chance to do much detailing work. Actually, I've done none. So the tower is very much as it was, but I'm hoping in today's episode, we're gonna actually make some progress on that. However, today we are gonna be starting work on something new. Now, you'll know for a while, I've been using this sort of area over here as my orchard. And what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm actually going to build a big logging station. As you can see, we've already got some logs here that have been delivered to us and chopped down, but we're gonna actually build a big facility here to store and process these logs. I'm also going to attempt to make a bit of a better way to harvest the trees and replant and regrow all of the trees using a kind of semi-automatic farm sort of thing, which I have an idea for. But before we can do any of that, we need to flatten down this area, chop down all of these trees, and generally we need to get pretty busy. So I guess that's gonna call for a time-lapse, right? So let's go. guys we are back and since the last cut we have been pretty busy indeed we've been doing a lot of trading over there at the village to get our emerald supplies up and that's enables us to get a four pyramid beacon now so we're a maximum strength on our beacon which we have been digging out down below in our mine to get lots of stone and a site uh, diorite and granite which i've been using to trade with stonemasons to get my emeralds so yeah, we've pretty much got our full emerald beacon now which is one good thing but as well since we have done this clearing we have been busy putting together this and this is what i briefly spoke about before this is my semi-automatic tree farm when i say semi-automatic i've still got I'll do a lot of manual work so i don't even know if it's like even a quarter automatic but what's going to happen is i'm going to be on that platform up there planting trees and then once the trees have grown i'm going to go to the top and i'm going to chop them all down and then we've got this water system and hopper system here which will basically collect all of my items and push them into this water stream and then eventually they will pop up from that hole there and that hole is going to be within my sort of lumber yard that i am kind of building here so this is sort of like going to be an external project but it's going to feed to the inside of the yard now this little contraption here and the hopper minecart is simply if, if any of the items drop on the dirt so this will be a little collection system just to pick up anything that doesn't fall into the water and then the little circuit down here will just basically make the dropper fire any items out so let me jump up to the top here so we can sort of test the upper minecart thing here as you can see it gets sort of blasted out so that's what i want to happen here so what i'm going to do is hopefully i'm going to grow using bone meal some trees now acacia might not be the best tree to go with because of it grows in a bit of a, an odd shape, but I do need the case for my build that is coming up. We have got loads of bone meal and bones from my skeleton farm. I think the process might need a little bit of refinement because we don't want to get damaged ourselves. Obviously. But now that we're up here, 
we can simply just chop away all of the wood. I'm quite sure where the main stems are though. So again, need to just do a bit of refinement work here to be able to identify where everything is. So all the acacia wood is, is chopped down. You can see in here that the dropper is doing its thing and spitting out everything. There's definitely some refinement work that needs to happen though. It looks like things are falling in places uh, I didn't anticipate them to. So we're going to have to sort of deal with the what's happening there. But as you see, everything is sort of decomposing. Everything is dropping down again. It's falling on the edge here. Maybe acacia logs aren't the best example for this, but... And what we should do is if we look down here, we should see all our items there that have flown down from the trees. And then the plan will be is that we will separate them out and do some automatic storage in our wood yard so that we'll get stored into the relevant logs, saplings, sticks. And there's probably about everything that drops, isn't it? Maybe apples from some of the trees. But for a first test, that works pretty well. Like I say, I don't think acacia is probably the best log type to use to do this test so i'm going to test all of the items that i have and then we can obviously see what each of the tree types does and adapt and amend this design as needed but at least the majority of the items are being picked up and we're not having to sort of walk around on the floor to pick them up manually which was the sort of more automated side of this process so i'm going to uh, keep working on this and develop it some more and then we will be right back all right guys we have been very busy in between cuts and we made some adjustments to our semi-automatic tree farm in that we've added a glass encasing around the outside of it and this is kind of to try and stop the trees from branching out too much so i've done some acacia on here and it's um, worked quite nicely so yeah so far so good with this uh, my only concern is that when it's night time whether any mobs and things will spawn in there but um i guess we'll have to see on that over here i've actually started to construct the lumber yard building itself and as you can see i've got the walls and the shell up itself so the block palette i decided to use for this was cobble stone bricks and acacia wood and as you see i've got some slabs and some stairs and some mossy cobble in there as well to add a bit of variation but yeah all four of the walls are up and this is going to be our main entrance into the building just got a chest down here to grab all the bits and pieces which have been accumulated while i've been doing some of the farming over there but yeah the actual shell of this building is now up so i need to do the floor because this floor just isn't going to cut it whether or not i go for a stone floor or i might go for a combination of dirt path blocks and something else it'll be remains to see and then i'm going to work out the ceiling and when i built this sort of wall design in my testing world i did come up with a roof and a ceiling but i'm not quite sure whether or not i want to kind of stick with that or if i want to do something else at the moment so I'm going to first of all get this floor done and I'll maybe start to try and do a bit of terraforming on this pathing out here. That's if I'm feeling brave enough to do some terraforming. But at the moment, everything is coming together quite nicely on the lumber yard. As we look at it from the top of the tower, it's going to be quite a nice build indeed as soon as I have worked out what to do with the roof. So. I'm going to go and play around a bit more, and as soon as I have made some progress, I will be back to show you guys. So, uh, yeah, catch up soon. All right, guys, so quite a bit of time has passed since the last update, and this is where we stand at the moment with the lumber yard. As you can see, the actual building itself hasn't really changed that much. Uh, I have built a perimeter wall around the lumber yard, and I have started some terraforming of some description going on here as you can see i've taken away all the grass and we've got a dirt and path and stone kind of look to it here but i've actually been spending quite a bit of time here and been getting very frustrated with this actually i'll be completely honest because what i was trying to do with the sorting system didn't quite work so i was trying to have like a real simple storage system whereby i could have everything in one long line and it would go down the hoppers check each hopper and then back up again but it turns out what i want to do didn't work and as a result of that 
The footprint at the back of it wouldn't be any smaller than my normal sorting system. So I kind of had to tear it all down and start again. And then I've had to kind of maneuver this pipe from the actual machine here around numerous times but we are slowly getting there now although i have come to a bit of a standstill now because i have run out of iron and i can't make any more hoppers as you can see at the back here i've kind of run out but down this side here you can see we've got every single type of wood we've got acacia oak burk jungle dark oak and spruce i had to think about that one for a minute and then as you can see they are all kind of identified here as to what's in each chest so i've got logs saplings and leaves and then the idea is once i get all the hoppers and everything in these end chests here will just pick up sticks mainly because that's the only other thing that should be dropping from this machine then over on this side i'm gonna just create some kind of like wooden looking machine so like some saws and different bits and pieces maybe have some logs and things stacking up but yeah i'm gonna to kind of play with that i have got a good idea for the roof and i think because i'm at a sticking point now with the iron and i can't make any more hoppers i may actually try and get a roof on this place next which is going to require acacia and jungle wood that's the palette i'm going to use for the roof we're going to have an acacia stair roof with a jungle wood trim and at the minute sorry it's gonna be over here. at the minute my jungle wood supplies isn't too great so i'm gonna have to go out and farm a few trees to get some more saplings I don't really seem to be getting many jungle sapling drops i don't know if they are rarer than acacia but as you can see i've got plenty of acacia saplings and plenty of acacia wood itself and i have to say though out of all of the wood types i've used on that machine so far acacia is by far the most difficult to farm because it just grows out in all different directions and it's really really sporadic but for now though that is where we are with the wood yard you can see the bits of terraforming i've done here i've tried to remove all of the grass blocks from here and it's i need to do some more work on this add some gravel and bits and pieces in it at points but i've been adding in some grass as you can see and then we need to just sort of maybe have some machines here maybe i can make a forklift or some cranes or something and just make it look a bit more sort of wood yardy our next goal is going to be getting the roof on this place so without further ado i'm going to head over get some jungle wood and let's jump into a time lapse i guess for this one and we will start building the roof Okay, so it wasn't really until I got the roof on this place that I actually started to see the scale and the size of what I'd built because I hadn't actually built the full thing in a creative world, only parts of the roof. So ladies and gentlemen, here we are. This is what we have at the moment. It's a little more evolved from what you saw in the time lapse. I've been adding in some details and bits and pieces and I've still got to work out what I want to do with the ends of it here, but as you can see, I've added in some sort of skylights here because I was finding it was a little bit dark and I wanted a way to sort of bring some light in. So I've added some windows on both sides here, as you can see. And then I've also added this over here. Probably needs a slab or something there maybe on top as well. Well, look at that in a bit. But I've added this little sort of viewport kind of over here, whether or not I leave it like this or not, I don't know. But maybe 
I'm thinking I want to do sort of like a crane, almost like the wood gets delivered here and I can pick it up and do stuff with it. But I need to kind of work out what I'm going to do with it for definite. But yeah, I mean, just now that this roof is on, this whole building, like I say, is just massive. I, I honestly didn't anticipate that it was going to look this big. And in hindsight, I'm kind of a little bit sad that I built this first because this whole chamber here isn't centralized to this building here, which kind of triggers me a little bit. So we, we might have to move this and also it's a bit close. If I can maybe downscale it slightly as well. I, I don't know, we'll, we'll see what we're gonna do with that. But like I said, I haven't actually thought of how I'm going to cap this off on the ends as such. So it's still open plan, but see, I've brought the beams running all the way up here into the ceiling. And then I've added this sort of upper walkway around here, like so. And I've got a little staircase here, which I need to do a little bit more work on, maybe move these supports here, cause it's kind of in the way as you come down. But yeah, I've been kind of adding some details as well. As you can see, I've got these little supports here using fence gates, which I think is quite nice. And um, not a lot has changed over here. I have, however, since the last episode, been and got some iron. And this should finish our uh, hopper supplies off so we can actually get this sorting system fully finished now. But I will be completely honest, this has been such a grindy episode. It's coming together nicely. It's coming together very nicely. I've tried a few things, like I tried running the jungle wood straight down there like that, but it didn't quite look right from the outside. It was a little bit too much. And as you'll see, if I take us back onto the roof over here, I haven't actually made this jungle wood flush to the acacia. And I kind of like it. It kind of gives a little bit more depth to the build over here. So something I'm really trying to do is, is add more detailing and add more depth, but she just makes those points stand out that little bit more. And before I actually did this, I only had designed sort of like up to this part. And when I was building the roof, I was kind of like, well, I can't keep going up at this angle because the roof is just gonna be absolutely mahusive. So on the fly, I kind of did this with the slabs and I'm really kind of happy how the whole roof has rounded off in the end. It's um. It's really quite nice how it's like sort of like rounds off and yeah i am really really happy with this roof and, and the way everything has turned out with this build so far with the exception like i say apart from that i didn't pre-plan where this machine and this contraption was here and it kind of it's off center so and it butts up right to the back here of this build so i gotta think about what i'm going to do with that more importantly though i really want to get this storage system and everything finished then i might take a bit of a break from this because there's still some work i need to do over at the tower because since we built the tower we haven't actually been back to do any detailing work on it which is a little bit disappointing almost like i spent the time to build it and then have totally neglected it so i kind of want to try and get some stuff done over there as well and probably what we're going to work on in today's episode and just get these two builds kind of to a decent standard but let me know what you think of the roof and like the block palette and everything that i've used here with the acacia wood and the jungle wood i did have acacia wood running on this gantry around here but i kind of found it was too ready orangey i think taking it back to the jungle wood has definitely improved the interior of that. And then having the acacia wood supports underneath them just makes everything pop that little bit more. I'm going to now finish off the rest of this storage system, get all the filters in place, do all the redstone, and then I'm probably, like I said, gonna take a break from this place. I'll head over to the tower and start doing some work on the detailing of the tower because I want to get a staircase sorted on the inside so we can at least traverse between the two towers and adding some windows and things I think would be nice as well. And as I have alluded to before, I've got a really nice idea what I hope is gonna be a really cool effect right in the bottom of the tower. So in my last cut, I may have alluded to the video wasn't very long, but it turns out after editing up to this point, we're already about 20 minutes in. So I better make this snappy. Okay guys, I am over here in the towers and 
I've started to add some detailing and decoration and light this place up again. So if I quickly put in a firework rocket and we can fly out here, you will see I have added some windows to each of the towers. The towers are using the same color scheme as the roof, just to sort of keep that kind of theme going. So that's one of the changes that I have made. Like I said, I've been lighting things up and added some windows. Still not got anything over here as of yet, but I have managed to put together the staircase. So that's a slab missing there, but from down there below. So we've added a staircase, which now goes all the way up to the top and links the two towers together and as you can see on this level here i've just got some shulker storage there's materials i've been working with while i've been doing this build and as uh, we go all the way up to the top here you'll see that that leads us to the other tower i do kind of want some sort of landing platform i'm thinking maybe i could cut out an area in the walls here or something just have like a large opening on these sides here it would also it would light up the build but allow me to just like fly in more easily. I often find have difficulty kind of trying to land on these platforms, which is the only entrance to this tower at the moment. You'll see I have uh, scaffolded all the way up to the top. And I don't know what's going on with that. But yes, I scaffolded all the way. To, I think it's clouds, actually. Man, it's that high. Sorry, I digress. But I've lit up the roof and I've removed all the temporary blocks that were still there from when we actually built the roof just to make it a little bit nicer. These improvements are not the only things I have been busy doing. I've alluded to multiple times that there is something special I wanted to try and create at the bottom of this tower and it's down there. Granted, I don't get the effect with my shaders on. So I'm going to turn my shader off quickly. And I get the effect from here because I haven't got the reflections in the glass. So what I was going for was sort of like a foggy kind of look. And it kind of makes it look like there's some sort of endless bottomless pit kind of down there that's kind of surrounded by fog. I don't know if I've done enough layers. However, there's about six layers of purple and magenta glass this took me absolutely ages to smelt it and get it all in place as you can imagine there's quite a few layers there but effectively what you do is you alternate the layers of glass so you, i did one layer of magenta and one layer of purple right at the bottom underneath the final layer of glass i have a pattern of end rods i don't have end rods under every single one but then in between them, I've got black wool and then black carpet covering the tops of the end rods just to light up the area, but also give that kind of dark black effect over there. There's still plenty more that's going to come from this build, and I still need to move over all of my brewing potions and stands over here, because let's face it, that's what this tower was for in the first place. Now, like I said, I am further along in this episode than I actually thought, but before we call it a day, there is one more job I want to do, and I think I have found a fix for my creeper farm to stop all of the skeletons from spawning. So I'm going to head over there really quickly with a load of glass and hopefully implement this change, which will mean we only get gunpowder because I really don't need any more string in this world. I've got too much of it already. Okay, for this next section, I need to go a little bit off kilter and we need to look at some diagrams. So I recently found a Shulkercraft farm, which is to generate music discs. And on that farm, they had put some pillars in place to prevent spiders from spawning. So I took a screenshot of this diagram and was really excited when I went into my world a moment ago. However, I've just realized that unfortunately, my tower is bigger than the one they use for their creeper disc farm. So I went into Excel and I came up with something that looks like this. Now, it's kind of a symmetrical design, which is okay. And it may not be the most efficient farm, but the key here was to try and remove any three by three areas in which a spider could spawn because you need a three by three area for the spider to spawn. So as you can see, there is no three by three area marked in the yellow. The yellow is the empty spaces. The gray is where I plan on putting the glass blocks to prevent the spiders from spawning. And red is just blocks on the edges, which is reducing the number of spawnable places for the spiders. So in the real world, it looks like this. And here is what it looks like on my farm itself. And as you can see, we have creepers spawning here and no spiders. So it's very successful. Whether or not it is the most efficient of farms is yet to be seen, but it works. And that is the main thing. 
I thought initially I would have to make the blocks on the inside of the farm too high, but then I realized spiders can only spawn in a 1.5 block high gap. So we don't need to worry about them spawning in there at all. As you can see, it just works. I was a little bit worried about the pathing of the water, but the water seems to navigate its way through the blocks just nicely. And yeah, the creepers spawn, the creepers get pushed off, the creepers work their way to the edge, and they fall down to their death. And then the gunpowder gets shot up, and happy days, we have got a gunpowder farm. Because let's face it, we're going to use a lot more gunpowder than strings, especially the fact that we're always flying everywhere and we are always in need of rockets. So yeah, I'm quite happy that I was able to come up with my own design based on the Shulkercraft solution. And ultimately, I'm really glad just to have this issue resolved on the farm. Woohoo! So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We are finally at the end of this episode. To me, it feels like it has been going on for absolutely ages and I've been grinding away so much at this episode. I started this episode well before Christmas and it is now... At time of finishing this, it is January the 6th. I think I've been going at this for a good three weeks, but I'm really happy with everything we have achieved in this episode. The barn is looking fantastic. The progress on the tower is coming along, and we finally ruled out all that string from this creeper farm. Of course, as always, guys, I thank you for your support and for tuning in to this episode. We'll be back with another episode of this Minecraft series really soon. But before I do go, please watch out on my channel. There will be a new Minecraft series starting real soon. And we won't be playing Java, we'll be playing Bedrock with a few special people. So stay tuned for that. As soon as we get everything all sorted and edited, I will be putting it out on my channel. But until then, guys, thank you for tuning in. Bye.